and i'm going to give you one uh, one example of enterprise search in a little bit more detail and this is the example of westlaw which is a company it's a legal search company so basically they they have this huge corpus of legal documents so every every point from the law for example the law of the country or or all kinds of laws will be written down and legal cases that have been uh, going on in court and so on they'll have uh, documents pertaining to all that and what people do is especially lawyers they subscribe to westlaw and by subscribing to westlaw you gain access to those documents so you can you can enter boolean queries and westlaw will retrieve documents based on what your boolean queries are so they have about half a million subscribers uh, even today who perform millions of searches a day over tens of terabytes of text data so this company uh, was was started in 1975 and even today most people tend to use boolean search on westlaw so they tend to use boolean queries which which are which they connect using various boolean operators even though westlaw has added rank retrieval since 1992 so why why do you think that lawyers would continue to still use boolean queries even though they've been provided the option of using rank retrieval i mean rank retrieval is something that people use all the time on google and all so why would lawyers prefer to why would anybody still prefer to use boolean queries like uh, lawyers they, they may have a slight i mean a general idea of what they're looking for already so uh, so this want to narrow it down but they probably i mean i'm thinking like uh, in a web search scenario you some most of the time you don't know what's going to come up so uh, i i think that could be i think that could be a reason okay okay so you're saying that lawyers have a precise idea of what they're looking for uh, and, at least uh, a general idea like like maybe some case was there or something like that and they want a precedent so something like that yeah the other thing is that uh, as we just saw boolean uh, boolean uh, retrieval systems have a very precise semantics when you get a result you precisely know why you got that result because it matches your query there's no there's no fuzziness in that so as long as your query is precise enough you can be guaranteed that whatever results you are getting are matching you know or are relevant to the query and particularly if you look at uh, you know professions like uh, lawyers they may often be interested they, they may also be interested in very in in the precise language that is being used in the document right so they can be very precise in how they build up their queries and they would also they would they would be interested in every single document so they don't want to miss any document that could be relevant to them right so um here's an example of the kinds of things that a lawyer could search for on westlaw so let's say there's a lawyer who wants information on the legal theories that are involved in preventing the disclosure of trade secrets by employees formerly employed by a competing company okay so you're working at a company and then you go and work for a rival company so what laws are there to uh, prevent you from disclosing information that you had at your previous company to your to, to this uh, new rival company that you're working for so if you want information on that this is the kind of query that you would submit to westlaw you would say give me all documents which contain the phrase trade secrets so this double quotes 
is it signifies a phrase query a phrase query is a query where you can have more than one term and the exact phrase must appear in the document so it it won't do to have trade and secret both appear but appearing in different paragraphs for example or in or, or secret appearing before trade that's not a, a a good match trade secret must appear as it is as a phrase in the same sentence so this slash s is a formal notation saying i want the phrase documents which contain this phrase trade secret in the same sentence as a word starting with d i s c l o s right and this wild card uh, this this exclamation mark is basically a, like a wild card character it's saying any word that starts with disclose and this is to uh, indicate that whether uh, this is to handle variants of this word so disclosure disclosed disclosing these are all different forms of the same verb and you can get all all variants of that word you can capture all the variants of that word by having this uh, you can a wild card query in the same sentence as the word prevent in the same sentence as the word employee again as a word starting with e m p l o y e so look at the precision of this query and also the length of this query so think of a sentence which satisfies this query what kind of sentence would that be it would have the phrase trade secret it would have uh, a word starting with disclose it would have prevent it would have a word starting with employee so it's going to most likely uh match this information need so professional searchers know how to translate their information need into a precise query and in a boolean retrieval model in a boolean retrieval system they feel that they have power and transparency over what they are getting in the result right because they are deciding what query uh, to submit and they know that every document that they are getting in 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 response is going to have is going to satisfy this query so here's another information need what are the requirements for disabled people to be able to access a workplace so again the query could be something like i would like all documents having the word having a word starting with d i s a b in the same paragraph as a word starting with access in the same sentence as as one of these so this is another departure from google search where where spaces in google search usually can be interpreted as the and operator although as i said it's not precisely and but you can think of spaces as by default as defaulting to and but here spaces default to or so you want in this sentence either the word work site or the word workplace or you want employment within three words within three places of the word place so this slash 3 so you you're seeing these operators right slash 3 slash s slash p these are called proximity operators they indicate that i want this word in the same paragraph as this word i want this word in the same sentence as this word i want this word within three words of this other word and likewise you can think of the you know this is a third example i like all queries start where uh, you have a word starting with host in the same paragraph as the as a word starting with responsive or a word starting with liable in the same paragraph as a word starting with intoxicate or a word starting with drunk in the same paragraph as guest so space is disjunction not conjunction and this was actually the default before uh, the modern search engines came along and they have long precise query in fact the average length of a query on westlaw is 10 10 words do you know what the average length of a query on uh, modern search engines is
take a guess. Two to three. That's right. So it's it's two point four. So you can see that there are, you know, uh, on on Westlaw, these professional searchers, and professional searchers are really professional. I mean, they are trained to translate information needs into queries. So you could be a lawyer who doesn't know how to search. So you can hire one of Westlaw's uh, 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 searchers to translate your information need into a precise query. On the other hand, you can't train people who use Google or Bing or any of the modern search engines because there's such a staggering variety of users all across the world. It's just impossible to train everyone. And that's one of the reasons why you find these Boolean operators only in the advanced search feature of Google because, you know, most people don't, you, you, you'll never be able to train them to use Boolean queries. Maybe, you know, if you are uh, in, in computer science or a related field, you might be used to thinking of uh, queries as as combinations of boolean operators but others can't be trained like that they're going to type what they type you know what they're going to type so yeah uh, are, are there proximity operators even in google um no there are no proximity operators yeah in google but there are and, uh, stuffs, but not the proximity sorry i've used uh, the and and or and double quotes but not the proximity so yeah, proximity operators are, uh, are are not there, but there is a way to handle proximity uh, okay. without having these operators, and uh, we'll see that either later in this lecture or uh, in the next lecture. One of the ways, uh, let me just tell you uh, very briefly how we could handle proximity operators without actually having uh, an operator per se. One of the ways you can do that is by defining a document not as a single file, but as a single paragraph. Right, so for example, uh, let's say I want to implement this proximity operator slash p. One way to do that is not to introduce an explicit operator, but to say that every document that I'm going to look at uh, is going to be a single paragraph. Right, so if, the, if, a, if a file has multiple paragraphs, I could treat every paragraph in it as a separate document with its own doc ID. So that way when I get... Uh, uh, when I get, when I have an AND query, I could, and I get a particular document as a result, I know that it must have, those words must have been appearing in the same paragraph. Uh, and how we'll, about wildcard entries? Yeah, wildcard entries. Um, wildcard entries. Well, let's try it out. Okay, let me just type my first four names and then star. Well, it doesn't interpret it as a yeah as a wildcard query. We are so here's the thing, right? Wildcard queries are again queries that probably only professional searchers would use. Yeah, right. So you it won't be the priority of a modern search engine to handle wildcard queries because most users are not going to use it anyway even boolean search is available only if you click this advanced search tabs you know you find then they ask you know you want web pages that have all these words or this exact wording or you have this or operator over here okay so this is the and this is the or and you want to exclude these words so these are you know, this is like the not operator. So, and of course, you can specify other constraints. You know, you want only English documents and so on. But, you know, this is not going to be used by most people. In fact, um, what was the statistics? Uh, I think uh, it's definitely less than 10% uh, of, of people who... Uh, so phrase queries are something that people tend to use more often. Right, you can use, uh, you probably used phrase queries, right, where you, you use double quotes. And the documents that you get will be documents which 
uh, which have this exact phrase. So phrase queries, I think 10% of searchers on modern search engines, something around 10% have used phrase queries. But Boolean search, I mean, it's going to be much less, maybe 1%, less than 1%, something like that. See if you can find out what the exact statistics are for that. But the point is that because most users won't be using wildcard queries, it won't be the priority of a search engine to handle them. We will learn how to handle wildcard queries in a, in a couple of lectures. So you'll learn how to do that. In fact, that should also help you understand why search engines would prefer not to have wildcard queries available too freely because it's a pretty expensive operation to process wildcard queries. And you'll see that in a few lectures from now. Any other questions? No, sir.